Hello, welcome to another episode of Ask Octopus, where we answer your interesting questions. Uh, questions that we get from the community or from customers that we talk to regularly. I'm Ryan Russo, and today Bob's with me. Hey, Bob. Hey, Ryan. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. All right. Let's, uh, let's jump into this question, uh, and hopefully it will make sense. It's a bit of a mouthful, uh, but the question is, how can I choose a different package for a step template for each project that uses it? So I have a step template. I want it to accept a package and do something with that package, but I want it to be a different package per project. Um, so let's just jump in and show what that looks like and and what that means. Yeah, I have you come across this? Is this something? I yeah, I have come across that actually. Um, it's, I think a couple of step templates that I've written recently uh, deals with something like that. Yeah, I, I think I've seen those. I, I know exactly which ones you're talking about. And I've had a customer ask me about this. I'm like, I know exactly how to do this. Uh, <laughs> I, I've done it a few times. I know you have. So it's a, I thought it would be a good topic for the video. Yeah, absolutely. I love getting this question. I'm like, I know exactly the answer for that one. I can immediately <laughs> answer it. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to add a step template. Uh, for today, I'm just going to use a run a script step. And recently, give it a name, which is just going to be like uh, deploy a package. And recently, what we've added uh, to our run of script steps, and I think this was part of the release with Kubernetes, like last mm -hmm. September, was we added uh, the idea of reference packages. So now you can add a package to a script step. Uh, you could always do the, I have a script file from inside a package but you also had the ability to add different reference packages. Uh, so you could have these be like utilities that you want to include or other changes, just like related packages to running the script. Yep. Um, so I'm going to use the reference package today to do this. And for the, the way I'm going to do this is the first thing I want to do is add a parameter for my package ID, just so I don't forget that. Like I don't have to jump around and come back and mm -hmm. add it later. Actually, I'm going to come back and give this a nice like prefix. It's always good. Uh, let's see, run up. What, what would I call it? Deploy a package. It's always nice to give your step templates a prefix so there's no potential like clashing with other variables that may be in use uh, in your project or other people's projects using your templates. Yeah, I like to namespace namespace it that way. That it, you're absolutely right. Let's see. That's going to be. That's all we need. So we've got this one parameter. It's going to be our package ID. And the reason we did this is when we add the reference package. Uh, so when you come into the package, you can choose the feed as normal. I've only got the one feed. And you can also choose a package. In this case, I've only got the one package. Uh, but if I was to choose this database package, it's always going to use that package. Like, no, you're not going to be, that's the one that's used for this step template forever and always, which you may want, because if it's your utility script, you want everybody to use the same version of utilities. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I want it to be different. So I'm actually going to change this to be a bound variable or bound to a variable. I choose my package ID parameter and then I can give it a name and I'm going to just call this my uh, script package. Now the name is important here because this is how we're going to reference it in a second. So I'm going to copy that. Actually, I don't think I need to copy it because Octopus does a great job of just like giving you those options in this nice variable dropdown. Yep. But out of habit, I just copy everything that I need. Uh, <laughs> So this package ID, because it's a parameter, will be provided when somebody adds it to a project, which we'll show in a second. But you can always reference it through this name. So that way you don't have to even know what package they're using. Yeah. So I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to, just for this uh, demo, I'm just going to get the path. So we can go in and insert that variable. And you can see we even get a set of variables uh, predefined for us with that script package as the name. So I'm just going to grab the extracted path. So it's going to extract that uh, package for us, and we can run some scripts from within it. If it's got data that we need to process, we can do whatever we need. In this case, I'm just going to use my old friend, write highlight, and I'm just going to print it out to the screen for us. And that should be it. So I'm going to save this. So that works out great with when you run into additional fun is if you have to make the feed dynamic as well. 
Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to uh, mention that, but uh, because I only have the one feed, uh, I left it alone, but you can also do the same thing. Just like Bob mentioned, you can bind the feed to a variable. And we actually have a really nice link here for dynamically selecting packages at deployment time. So this is the basis for this whole demo. So if you wanted to, you could click this link, it'll open up our docs page and go through uh, exactly what you need to do. There's also some caveats with this, with having dynamic packages. I think it affects um, package caching and maybe the Delta compression. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd have to double check that, but the documents spell that out. Things that you should consider before using this approach. So I'm going to just go in and create a project quickly. So this will be my run a script project. I'll put it in uh, my project group. Save that. We're just going to go in and add one. Oh. Oh, what did I call it, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was deploy a package. Uh, was it deploy? I named it the same as our built-in. I was like, I was going to search for that. I'm like, ah, oh, that didn't seem right. All right. So now you can see we've got our package ID parameter. I can come in and I could even bind this to a package in my project. So I could have that just defined in my variables. Uh, I haven't done that. So I'm going to just type in my package ID, which you can get from the packages screen through the library. Mm-hmm. Um, or from your external feed. So I've got Octopus, uh, or no, not Octopus, OctoFX.database. I'm going to save that. No, we don't want to run on the deployment target. It's going to run on the server. And we'll just create a release and run this. So one thing that's nice about that package reference and using the step templates like that is you have the ability, it says run on a, run on a server, you can, once you add in workers, you can then run them on workers as well. So I've been using this, this method to do my database deployments actually. So I have a step template that handles my database deployments. I can now run them on workers. Yeah, that was exactly the case that came up. We want to create a, uh, a step template for running database scripts. We want it to be you know, this is our standard way of doing it. The scripts, the, the built-in, or I guess the inline script is going to handle the logic for it, including like error handling and all of that, uh, what variables you need to provide as parameters, but they wanted the, the package to vary. So you yep. see that if we go into acquiring packages, that it'll actually say, you know, that it's using that package and that version. Actually, I actually didn't show that when I created a release. We can jump back there real quick, but you can see that it's using that package ID from the variable. Yep. And it's going to go in and, and we got that nice right highlight showing where our uh, extraction is. So yeah, that was one thing to notice. Uh, even though it is a variable, you can see if you come into your packages when you create that release, it's actually going to use ID and show you those options for choosing what version you want in, in that package. Yeah, it does, does a really good job of figuring a lot of that out. Even with the dynamic feed, it does a, I think it does a pretty good job of trying to figure out as much as it can, but you know, sometimes it kind of might get a little confused with the dynamic feed. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely a, a good approach for, for setting up step templates that way. And because it's a question like we've, I know we've both done it. And since it was a question that came up, I was like, you know what, good video to make so that we could share that out with everybody. Uh, people who may not know that's an option, maybe plant some ideas for them going forward to standardize their, whether it's their, uh, database deployments, or maybe they have other scripting things like maybe Terraform or Kubernetes, they can have custom steps like that. And you can also do this with the, the deploy website step as well. Uh, even, as, even if you're not using like the workers or the run a script step, you can still use this for other things as well. Yeah, that's true. Anything on the step templates where that package is, has got that option to bind mm -hmm. to a variable, which I think they all do. Yeah, so you can come in and say, you know, deploy a step or run an IS, anything that has that package ID and has the ability to bind, you can use it there. Yeah. Definitely, cool. Well, that is the end of my question and the end of my answer. So thanks again for joining us this week for this episode. Uh, if you have an interesting question that you'd like an answer for and maybe to see it in uh, our our video series, you can submit it at hello.octopus.com slash ask octopus, or you can email us at support, uh, especially if it's a question that you need answered in a support manner, we'll take care of that and maybe use it as a video. Uh, and feel free to come chat with us on Slack. We like to hang out 
and, and talk with you. So you can join us there at octopus.com slash Slack. Cool. Thanks everyone for, again, for joining and thanks Bob for uh, hanging out with me and going through that question. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, it was a very interesting question and something we get asked quite often. So it's nice. We have a video on it now. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Bye everyone.